it's second down and 12. The ball is back on the 44. Herman is way wide to the right side. McNeil to the left. And Tucker Fredrickson moved up into the slot. Look out for Fredrickson. He's been a prime receiver this time. He goes deep to McNeil. Fredrickson's got it. And he is caught and he is dragged down by Ray Jones. But not until he reaches the Philadelphia 25-yard line. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. Before we get started, just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below, maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. But anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Well, the New York Giants just wrapped up their fourth day of training camp. Still no pads. Today's Sunday. They got the they got the day off. Coming back Monday, putting on the pads. All right. So, uh, <laughs> seems like they're gonna need to put the pads on because there's been there's been some hitting going on and even had their first fight yesterday. Um, Shane Lemieux. Uh, there's the article here. Um, Mark Lewinsky. Dexter Lawrence, even Leo the Lion got in there, you know, said it kind of, uh, did some <laughs> wrestling around, um, I think it was Leonard Williams, I think, um, I think it was, uh, read it correctly, body slammed, uh, Lemieux, so, I mean, uh, tempers were flaring, so, and then also you have, uh, Aaron Robinson, he knocked Wandale Robinson to the ground, on Thursday, on Friday, he knocked David Sills to the ground, hit, hit him in the back, and knocked him to the ground, which is to try not to do. So apparently Aaron Ro Robinson's, um, he's ready to rock and roll. So well, Monday, when the pads go on, this uh, it should be pretty, pretty interesting because, you know, they're, they're getting ready to hit. So it's good to see. But uh, they wrapped up their fourth day. Um... It was, it was a good day for the, the probably for the defense. Um, Belton and Beavers, their names in there. Um, Darnay Holmes once again he caused another um, a turnover where he punched the ball out of Saquon Barkley's hands. So, I mean, I'll tell you what, it's four days in a row he's caused a turnover. And not only that, four days in a row, but then if you want to include the last game of last year he was in when we played against the Eagles when he got his ribs injured, right, he got an interception. So he's, I mean, every day he's, he's got something going on. Um, it was a few guys um, that, that, that had come back who were out on, I believe they didn't practice on Friday, but um, John Feliciano was not one of them. There's an article, a couple articles here I'll go over. Some guys came back, but um, John Feliciano, they held him out. Um, apparently the heat was getting to him, like on Friday. So uh, they held him out. Um, Kadarius Tony, he had like a day off. Um, he's just coming back from surgery, too. So, I mean, hopefully, you know, hopefully it's just a precautionary measure. You know, I mean, it wasn't like that. I, I don't think from what I'm reading here is, you know, he was injured at all or anything. But um, as a precautionary measure, he had a lot of reps. First three days, a lot of reps, a lot of running around out there. So they're apparently going to give him off Saturday and Sunday and hopefully come back maybe Monday and maybe take it from there. Um, so, I mean, there, there was some, obviously some good things on the offensive side and on the defensive side, but the biggest thing was <laughs> the battle, well, not so much the battle royal, but the, the, the first fight of the spring, uh, of the, the spring, uh, the, of training camp. Now, there was the, the fight last year, okay, that I remember Daniel Jones wound up on the bottom of the pile. Yeah, I can't remember exactly how that started last year, but uh, it had a nice brawl, big, big brawl last year. I said Daniel Jones was on the bottom of the pile. Um, and, uh, and I can't remember if they went to the, it was the NFL Network. They were talking about the, the fight. There was there was no video of it at all. But um, uh, Michael Irvin was, was talking about, he was all fired up about it. I did a video on it, uh, too. Uh, he said the Giants were bonding. You know, he said, man, you don't know how good this is. They're, they're bonding, you know. I, he said something like, I wish the Dallas Cowboys would do something like this. This is what the Giants do. This is the Giants. And, you know, he was all fired up about it. And I'm, oh, and I'm, 
thinking, oh, man. You know, because this was training camp last year. The Giants were 5-3 and three in their last eight games in 2020. I mean, you know, 5-3, and three, last eight games, right? Um, you know, they come to training camp, they're bonding. Man, phew, man, we might be world beaters this year in 2021. Mm. Mama's wrong again. Uh-uh. <laughs> Couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, they might have been bonding in training camp, but it certainly didn't translate into wins in the uh, win column for last year. They only won four games, so. But um, if, uh, you know, if uh, Saturday's training camp is any indication of, uh, you know, of the um, how fired up the guys are ready to hit each other, the next couple weeks should be pretty interesting. All right, the New York Giants. Here we go, baby. <laughs> From SB Nation. I love it. Giants training camp, day four. First fight. Gotta love it. Only took four days. <laughs> and a whole lot more. Gotta love it. Let's see here. New York Giants held their fourth practice at training camp on Saturday. Big Blue View was not in attendance. But here is a practice report based on observations from those who were at Quest Diagnostics Training Center. First fight! Was it Dexter Lawrence and Mark Lewinsky? Or was it uh, Lawrence and Shane Lemieux? I also heard uh, uh, Leo the Lion, Leonard Williams was in there as well, too. Dexter Lawrence, let's see here, just buried right guard Mark Lewinsky After goal line quarterback sweep and started a brief fight and pile on. After this, Saquon Barkley doing a lot of talking to the defensive sideline. A lot of talking. Body blows. Wow. <sighs> okay. Dexter Lawrence leaps on Shane Lemieux in anger. Someone pulls Lawrence off and then Leonard Williams body slams Lemieux. Wow. A little Royal Rumble going on there. Injury notes, all right? The Giants gave starter center John Feliciano another day off of rest following the heat-related issues he experienced on Thursday. There is no timetable for Aziz Ojolari on the NFI non-football injury with a hamstring injury and will be ready to return to practice. There's also this from Dan Dugan of The Athletic. Don't see now this is uh, don't see tight end Ricky Seals Jones again either. So not sure what's going on with him. However, looks like Jordan Akins, defensive lineman Nick Williams, and linebacker Darian Beavers are back after missing yesterday. So that's good. But we'll have a little bit more on Darian Beavers in just a moment here. But uh, so we know where Feliciano's at. All right, we know these guys, but uh, Ricky Seals Jones we're not sure of. Okay. And yours truly had noticed Darian Beavers riding the bikes on Friday. I had not, to be honest, noticed that Ricky Seal Jones and Nick Williams didn't take any reps. So, and then it's like, you know, Kadarius Tony did not participate in any team drills today. Sounds like he planned maintenance day. He has logged a ton of reps over the first week of camp. Yeah. And it's right here. You know, before you flip out about Kadarius Tony, which I, I certainly do. <laughs> I certainly do. But remember, he's coming off knee surgery. And he had three great days of practice, three good, solid days of practice. Take the freaking weekend off, brother. Great job, man. Great job. So, all in all, first week for Kadarius Tony. Oh, 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 there we go. Two thumbs up. So, and then we got quarterback Daniel Jones doing another pass to the wrong guys. That's four days in a row with at least one interception thrown. So, you know. Dane Belton with his first pick of camp, playing center field on a deep post from Jones to Sills. Goes up and gets the ball. Nice play. So that's good to hear. Good to hear. And then you got Daniel Jones' best throw of camp was through traffic to rookie Wando Robinson and back in the end zone for a touchdown. So and that's right here. Right here. It's a good throw. You just you get it from the ground level view right here. Fires it right in there. Boom. Right? Boom. So, there wasn't a lot of room in there, right? Gunned it right in there. It was a good throw. So, but I, 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 hearing a lot of good things about Wendell Robinson, too. So, that's good. 
Then we got more here on the Shane Lemieux. This is from uh, the New York Post. Shane Lemieux tackling Dexter Lawrence sparks heated Giants camp scuffle. All right, here we go. What we got now? In the Giants locker room, offensive lineman Shane Lemieux is situated between Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence. Aha. Uh -huh. Two defensive linemen. Saturday, a trio came together on the field in the most heated moment thus far of the training camp. The first scuffle of the summer on day four of camp was triggered when Lemieux, after a play was over, tackled an unsuspecting Lawrence, no small feat considering Lawrence is 342 pounds. Angered by that, Williams stormed in, ripped Lemieux off his defensive lineman, and body slammed Lemieux to the grass. It came and went quickly, but it was fairly violent while it lasted. I bet it was. It's just heated, man, Lemieux told the post afterward. People were tired, competing, stuff happens. The O-line and the D-line, we're, <laughs> we're interfaces. I feel like if you get into someone's face for so long, it's like, uh, okay, it's enough. I love my teammates, me and the D-line are boys, and we get it. So it's funny because we go out there and we battle all day out there. Every day I come in and sit down in the locker room and go, what's up, guys? What's good? We know we're going to make each other better, and we're competing. So hopefully this is it. And there, Lawrence is on top of uh, the good old <laughs> Lemieux on the bottom down there. At least I know they're not going to get a concussion. And here's another um, – Picture of the of the fight. I guess that's the meal on the bottom again. I guess <laughs> no concussion. Now that's good. That's a plus. All right. Let's see here. As to the details of what sparked the, the dust up, Lemieux lining up as a starting left guard was not exactly forthcoming. I can't even remember. He said he blacked out. He said I blacked out. He said. I just remember something happened and I was laying on the ground and then there were five people on top of me. That's all I remember. There will be no lingering hard feelings, Lemieux promised. It stays on the field, he said. Even if we have a team period and then we go off to the side, it's, what's up, guys? What are you guys saying here? We work with each other because at the end of the day, we're a team. Right now, it's hard because it's training camp, but we're a team. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, that's what it is. You just got to put the stuff, you know, stuff happens in training camp, you know. You know what happens, you put it aside, and you just move on forward, right? You can't let it linger. All right, then we got from Giants.com, five things we learned from training camp on Saturday, all right? Today's hard to believe. Today's the last day of July. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. We got, some, we got August coming up. We got three preseason games, right? And then we got the season starts all over. Absolutely amazing. Well, I think it's when you're an older fart like me. I think time goes by a lot faster than maybe if you're younger. It just seems like it just seemed like the the, the season was over. <laughs> I mean, just a, about a couple months ago. But. All right. The Giants took the field on back together. Oh, back okay, back together Saturday to a Quest Diagnostics training center. Coach Brian Dable met with the media before practice, while rookies Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau spoke following the session. Today's team drills centered around fringe red zone works. So They're not quite in, you know, the red zone, outside the red zone, but also they had situational. Um, they were like third and six and third and nine, third and six to third and ten, third and six to third and nine, I think it was on Friday. So every, obviously every day is some type of situational work that they got going on. So, uh, But uh, let's see, for the second consecutive day, the Giants had some alumni present at, at practice. Howard Cross. Brandon Jacobs and Plaxico Burris were spotted on the sideline. Cool. They got Thibodeau and Neal growing together. That's good. That's good. They're going to make it. I'll tell you what. Two top seven picks. Guess what? You're only going to make each other better. So that, that's what you want. Yeah. You're only going to get, I mean, Evan Neal's only going to get so good. If, if he had to go up against me every day, he's only going to get so good. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau is only going to get so good if he had to go up against me every day, right? You got it. You want the best going up against the best. So it's either Kayvon against Evan Neal or Kayvon going up against Andrew Thomas, right? So guess what? It's only going to make Kayvon better. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm all for that. And I, I, same same thing with the other guys. I'm all making Evan Neal or Andrew Thomas better. Bring it on, baby. Bring it on. 
When the Giants selected Kayvon Thibodeau, fifth, and Evan Neal, seventh overall in this year's draft, it was clear that the two would be linked forever. Yep. Absolutely. And in the fact that the former is an edge rusher and the latter is an offensive tackle, and the connection between the two becomes even more obvious. Absolutely. I mean, it's not like you got one's a guard and one's a, uh, a cornerback, you know, or, you, you know what I mean, where they, you know, or, or uh, I don't know, one's a running back, one's a center, or so, you, you know, yeah, you got these guys going up against each other. I mean, if one was like a wide receiver and the other one was a cornerback and they went up against each other, oh, yeah, be pretty cool, too. It's, com- it's, it's hard coming in as a rookie, regardless of what round you're taking, Coach Brian Dable told the media, but they've been ex- excellent in meetings. They've done what they're supposed to. They've worked extremely hard in practice. There's good competitiveness in practice. But sure, you know, you take two guys that early in the first round and you want to make sure you hit that hit on them and not just as players, which is important, but as people and the right people for the organization. So, yeah, counting on those guys. Oh, yeah, it's huge. I mean, just because the guys have athletic talent, all that, they may not be right for building a team. They may not be right for that organization. You know, so it's just more than just talent. After Thibodeau missed some time during OTAs due to his injury, the rookie linebacker is back on the field in full at the start of training camp. Thank goodness. The two first-round picks have been going up against each other a lot during team drills, and both of them have admitted that it's been mutually beneficial. Oh, I bet it has. It's crazy that through high school and through recruitment and every major camp that was the matchup that everybody wanted to see. Me versus Kayvon, Neil said. It's just so ironic that we ended up on the same NFL team. (laughs) I'm just so excited to go out against him every day. Get each other better. Absolutely. You know, right? Iron sharpens iron, right? Steel sharpens steel. Best go up against him. We want to make each other better. Got to love it. I mean, you know, just how lucky we are, you know. I mean, obviously, they haven't played yet or anything like that, but how lucky we are. I mean, have a, a top five edge rusher, and we got two top seven tackles. I mean, and I said, and then if Aziz gets a little a second-round pick, Aziz Ojolari put on some upper body, some strength, that's a, put on some muscle and all and everything. Man, if he can get a little bit better, man. I mean, that's how you start building a team. Obviously, it helps if you have a quarterback, too. You know, so we're not exactly sure about Daniel Jones. But, boy, man, you got yourself two edge rushers. You got yourself two tackles. Whew. You know, now you got to start, obviously, start working. Ah, obviously, there's other parts of the pieces of the puzzle. I mean, you need some cornerbacks and all. But, I mean, you know, if you got yourself two edge rushers and two tackles. I mean, what have them been the Giants been like for so long? The Giants need an edge rusher. I mean, I'm so sick and tired of hearing that going over there. Oh, the Giants need an edge rusher. Oh, the Giants need a tackle. I'm so sick and tired. Yeah, we don't have to hear. Of course, we've been hearing this for quite a while. The Giants need a quarterback, so. But uh, we'll, we'll find out about that after the season's over. Football is a game of trenches, Thibodeau added. And starting with the trenches is a great start from the man upstairs. And they did it, and I feel like as we continue to get older and mature, we're going to continue to grow and, and gel together and keep bringing both sides to the forefront. Pads coming soon. Should be Monday. After four days of practice to start training camp, things are about to pick up. The Giants will be donning pads for the first time on Monday as the calendar flips to August. Yes. There's a lot of good teaching out here. It's really like I said in the spring. It's a teaching camp, they will say. It's competitive because there's fans and the nature of the training camp. But the evaluation process of the things that they need to do physically, and they're able to do that, really exert that a little bit more. And I think we're all waiting for that. It was, I mean, he's trying to stress, I know, in this press conference that, you know, you know, it's the teaching and all of that, but like, you know, you can really try to start evaluating the guys, you know, um, when they start putting the pads on. He's like, you know, don't get too excited just yet. There ain't no pads on. It's only been a couple of days. So, right. But he said, once the pads start coming on, that's when he starts you know, picking up the evaluation more and more. Uh, let's see. It was clear that today the coaching staff 
aren't the only ones excited to put pads on. The players could not be more eager. I'm very excited, Tim, I said. There are a lot of things as a pass rusher, as a defensive guy, you aren't able to do without pads. The offense has the baggy jerseys so you can just pull on them. Now it'll be more of a fair game. I'll be able to use all the moves I've been working on. So that's good. The extremely excited I get the chance to get better because when you don't have pads on, you get better from a sense of pass protection and stuff like that. But it's not the same, said Neil. We really can't fit our combo blocks or really lean on guys in the run game. I'm definitely excited for that standpoint of it, for sure. So, And they got Mr. Andrew Thomas, our other stud tackle. Man, I love saying that. Two freaking stud tackles. Woo! Love it. Man, love it. I couldn't be happy with these two guys. Man, absolutely fantastic. Andrew Thomas has been a bit had a big bounce back season last year, allowing just two sacks on 517 pass block snaps across 13 games. His performance earned him a 78.9 overall grade from PFF and a pass block grade 82.1. I tell you what, might only get better. Which ranked 12th among all offensive tackles. And let's not forget, at the end of the season, what do you have to have? And have surgery. Why? Because his ankles, foot, right? Causing him problems. Good luck trying to pass protect against the best, some maybe the best, you know, athletes in the world, right? Edge rushers, right? If you got problems with your ankles and your feet, good luck. Let's see. After Thomas missed spring workouts due to an injury, his impact both on and off the field during training camp has been felt by not only Neil, but also by Thibodeau. Drew, he's a great guy. Definitely a great resource to lean on because he's been through it, Neil explained. He's been a top 10 pick, a lot of expectations coming coming in, and I feel like he's handled himself very well. I'm extremely grateful to have an asset and a resource like that for sure. As our relationship continues to grow and evolve, I'm sure that I'll lean on him even more. Oh, it's been great. Not just him, but tackle Andrew Thomas. Them as a unit, added Thibodeau. Me being able to go back and forth, you never, you, you never. There are no plays off. So, I mean, obviously, you got him rushing from one side, one play, and maybe going to the other. So, that, you know, I mean, it's like it's like pick your poison. Uh, I'm going to go up against Neil this play, the next play. They're going to have me against Andrew Thomas. Pick your poison. Everyone asked me, what is the difference between now and I? And I mean college and the NFL. It's like you have to be 100% and have a move every play in the NFL. There is no getting by. Just going against both of them, and Evan especially, is good to continue to grow and share info now and again. Now, you also mentioned, I mean, because, like, you know, when, when you're such a superior, talented athlete, you've got the size, the strength, the speed, the quickness, and all that stuff, I mean, sometimes you can just get by, blow by guys, you know. Uh, you know, you don't go up against the best talent, you know, in college all the time and everything like that, or especially like in high school and everything. So, I mean, so it, but now, I tell you what, there's you know, what he was saying, that there's every play, you got to bring your A game. Every play. So, and we got the young defensive backs, right? There we go. Look strong. For the first few days of training camp, Darnay Holmes, had been one of the biggest bright spots on the defense. And he was again on Saturday. Holmes had an interception in each of the first three practices and followed up on Saturday with the forced fumble, which Julian Love picked up and returned the other way for what would have been a likely a touchdown. Speaking of Love, the defensive back also had a nice pass breakup during individual drills toward the start of practice. Aaron Robinson also forced an incompletion during this period. The other turnover forced by the defense Saturday was caused by two rookies. Six-round linebacker Darian Beavers got great pressure and was in the backfield on the play, forcing a deep pass, which fourth-round safety Dane Belton intercepted in, in the end zone. Last season in Cincinnati, Beavers recorded four sacks and 11 tackles for loss, earning 86.1 pass rush grade. Fantastic. Love it. Meanwhile, Belton picked off five passes at Iowa last year, leading to an 82.3 coverage grade. So, right? So, I mean, we got some, uh, you know, got some, certainly got some 
some some hope, some hope. And it's not. I mean, it's great getting those those top picks in there and all, and, and they hit a home run with those guys. That's fantastic. But I'll tell you what, man, it's so sweet and so special. You pick somebody in the fourth round or fifth round. I'm not saying they got to be a Hall of Famer or an All Pro or something. But man, if you get somebody like in a fifth round, you know, later rounds, and, and they can actually, it's like, wow, this guy could be actually be a starter. You know, what I mean, that's fantastic. You got because you got it. You know, you, you want to hit on all your draft picks, obviously. That ain't never going to happen. But, I mean, if you take, if you get seven rounds, you know, if you can get four or five guys, you know, who, who you can, you know, keep on your roster and resign and all that, man, that's huge. I mean, I said, nobody's getting hitting on seven out of seven or anything like that, you know. But, I mean, you get on your first couple of rounds, obviously the first, second, maybe third rounds, but, I mean, Rounds four, five, six, and seven. If you got four picks, if you can hit on like two out of those four, man, that's fantastic. That's a great percentage. When veterans reported to camp on Tuesday, there were four players placed on on lists that were temporary to keep them out of practice. Sean Shepard with his Achilles, Nick Gates with his leg, Matt Parrott coming off a knee surgery, right, were put on the pup list. Uh, Aziz Ojolari was placed on the non-football injury list with a hamstring injury. I guess he was like... He wasn't at the Giants uh, facilities where I guess he was on his own and he was, I guess, training and pulled a hamstring. Right? When I asked about the second year linebacker's progress on Saturday, Dable was not ready to give a return date for him. He's working through it. I don't want to give you a timetable, but he's gotten better, the head coach said. I mean, a hamstring, I mean, it's tricky. I mean, you know, you think you're coming back, you think you're good, this, that, and the other thing, you, you, you take. You know, you, you you run, you do a little sprint or something like that. <laughs> I think I pulled it again. You know, so it's it's tough. It's tough. And then the thing, and you know, other thing is too, is when you think it feels good and all this and everything like that, you you, you might be kind of like, you know, kind of doing like like what Saquon does. You know, he comes back from injury, he's still a little timid and all that. I mean, it's the same thing with the hamstrings, like. And if I run real hard, is it, is it fully healed? Is it gonna is it gonna go if I if I if I do a fast if I sprint or you know that's a tough injury, tough injury. Ojolari has still a rookie campaign, setting a franchise rookie record with eight sacks. He also became the first player in Giants history to register a sack in each of his first three games, which is true. So he uh, he, he did very very good. And then we got this one more here. All right. This is from Giant Country, Fan Nation. What we learned after New York Giants camp practice number four. All right, here we go. East Rutherford. After several days of hot, humid, and sticky weather, New York Giants' final day in the camp acclimation period couldn't have been more perfect weather-wise. It was, a, it was a beautiful day yesterday, absolutely beautiful, with temperatures hovering in the 80s. The Giants and their loyal fans got a picture-perfect day to celebrate the league-wide back-together event, which included alumni autograph signings by former receivers Plexico Burris and Mario Manningham and running back Keith Elias. I remember, yeah, I remember Keith Elias. Oh, yeah. The Giants will have Sunday as a day of rest before returning to the field on Monday in full pads for an intense week of practice. That will be capped by the planned blue and white scrimmage on Friday night. Ooh. And then the following Thursday is when they'll be in our first preseason game. So, meanwhile, let's look at what we learned from the Giants' fourth practice of the summer. They will not jump into any conclusions. Overall, it can probably be said that the Giants' offense didn't look as sharp as the defenses this week. Well, I mean, a lot of that, you know. It seems like you say that a lot. It's not, a lot of times, it's like the defense has always seemed a little bit ahead of the offense in the beginning. Then the offense starts gelling, and then you know, then things take on a little different, uh, different view. But I mean, it's usually in the beginning. It seems like the defense has has the upper hand. That's nothing new. In fact, the opinion depends on how the coaches view the practice. But regardless, if anyone is looking for a head coach, Brian Dable, to arrive at any conclusions about what he's seen after four days of practice in which the players weren't in pads and no live contact was allowed, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, as we mentioned that in, in, you know, in his, um, his press conference. You know, Some of these guys, it's the first time in this offense where, where they're practicing with Daniel Dable set on Saturday. 
will kind of day by day get better each day, have a positive mindset, and correct the things you have to correct. The evaluation period will start once the team can get into pads, which will be on Monday. And even then, they will caution people from making quick conclusions. There's an old ball coach who's been pretty successful who used to say, let's not be an instant evaluator. We'll give these guys a little bit of time here. I, he didn't mention who the coach was, but uh, I'm, I, I don't know who it was. But that's what uh, that, I guess that was what they used to say. That includes uh, allowing for a few days in the pads. That's really when training. I mean, this is great. There's a lot of good teaching out here, Dable said. It's like I said in the spring. It's a teaching camp. It's competitive because there are fans and the nature of training camp, but the evaluation process of the things they need to do physically, and they're able to do that, really exert that a little bit more. I think we're all waiting for that. I think we're all waiting for the pads to go on. Oh, yeah. So it's looking like, you know, um, you have to see, I mean, I'm thinking like full pad practice, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, obviously the game is probably Friday night. So I guess maybe Thursday probably may not have any pads, might be like maybe like kind of a, a walkthrough kind of thing. So it will be interesting to see how they approach that. Don't count Darnay Holmes out. Ever since he was selected in the fourth round of 2020 draft out of UCLA, Cornerback Darnay Holmes has seemingly had the odds stacked against him only to rise above it. I know Deion Sanders is very high on him. Very high on him. In three seasons for UCLA, he had a lot of snaps. A lot of snaps. I mean, look, almost 2,000 snaps he had in his three years. The 5 for 10, 195 pound Holmes played outside cornerback on 1,852 snaps while manning a slot for just 76. Now it's kind of reversed. So, yeah, when he arrived in East Rutherford, the Giants moved Holmes inside to the slot, likely due to concerns about size mismatches with bigger receivers, and he wasn't too shabby in the role. Holmes, as a rookie, played in 501 coverage snaps and didn't give up a touchdown. He also recorded one interception and three pass breakups in his snaps and mounted to a season-ending 91.2 NFL coverage rate. All right. The following year, the Giants looked as though they wanted to upgrade the slot position. They drafted Aaron Robinson out of UCF, liking his length and size of the position. But Robinson started the year on the pup list because he had the, uh, the core, muscle core uh, surgery, right, uh, uh, before uh, camp started. So he, so he was out for a little while there, muscle core. Um, oh, okay, sports hernia. There you go. Sports hernia injury. Meanwhile, Holmes lost snaps to Julian Love before a season-ending knee injury in Week 12 ended Holmes' second season early. Well, I got knee. I also saw that he uh, like injured his ribs, too, when he um, picked off the pass against, it was Week 12, uh, against the Eagles. He intercepted the pass. Jalen Hurts' pass right down by the goal line. And after he got when he went in and he got tackled, he injured his ribs. So I don't know if he injured, also injured his knee at that particular point too, or what. But yeah, but he that was a that was the last game he played. It was the Eagle game last year. With Robinson and Love projected for different roles in the defense this year, Holmes still has to fight for the ground this time against third round pick Cordell Fly. While the rookie has shown some promise, Holmes has started camp on fire. I haven't heard much about Flot so far. I mean, you know good or bad or whatever, but, um, you know, uh, I tell you what, I mean, yeah, if Holmes can keep it up, well, that'd, be, that'd be fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I mean, I'm hearing, I haven't heard much about Adoree Jackson, but I mean, I heard, you know, Aaron Robinson playing tough, he was looking to hit, okay, he has had a couple pass breakups, but Darnay Holmes has just been, you know, I'm not saying lights out, but he's, he's had a very good camp so far, and I'll tell you what. That's what it took to light a fire under the guy. Go right ahead, man. It's fantastic. I, I, I wish him nothing but the best. I hope he takes off. I hope he does a phenomenal job for the Giants. And it would be fantastic the Giants actually drafted somebody like in the fourth round. You know, that's just four years go out. And they actually actually resign the guy to, you know, to, a, to a contract. It would be fantastic. Instead of just having a guy come in, draft him in the fourth round. Hey, guy wasn't too bad. Yeah, we're just going to let him go, though. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I hope we just start signing guys. 
that we actually draft. That would, wouldn't that be just wonderful? He's recorded three interceptions in the team's first three practices, and he forced a big turnover against running back Saquon Barkley by punching the ball out of Barkley's grasp, which is an easy, not easy to do. The loose pigskin was scooped up by Love and returned for a touchdown. So four practices, four turnovers. If Holmes keeps making these plays during camp and the preseason game, it will be difficult not to include him on the initial 53-man roster. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, well, you don't want to jump to conclusions or anything like that. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, obviously, so far, I mean, yeah, he, he's, you know, looking good for the final 53, but I mean, especially with Wink Martindale's defense, you know, I mean, because you got to get the pressure, but it's so important. You got to have that good coverage in the back. You have a lot of one-on-one, and you don't want guys getting burnt because, you know, that's what happened to him last year. The Baltimore Ravens had a lot of injuries in their secondary, and apparently Wink was doing what Wink kind of does, sending pressure, having the guys maybe a second, third string court, corner back, you know, going one-on-one back there, and they gave up. They got burnt a lot. They gave up a lot of long plays, gave up a lot of touchdowns. So I'm not exactly sure if that was the main reason why they kind of maybe let Wink go, I'm not exactly sure. But, I mean, you know, he, he, he plays the way, you know, he coaches the way, you know, that's, that it is what it is. Um, but, I mean, it would be so, so important for us to get some good quality secondary play. And, uh, I mean, if I said Darnay Holmes steps it up this year, that would be just fantastic. So, you see, I mean, yeah, there, was, there was some good and there was some bad. I mean, um uh, also, you know, how, how, we, how we kind of got like uh, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau starting to, you know, uh, ramp things up a little bit, you know, but, he, but he's going, you know, it seems like he's going against like uh, not only Andrew Thomas, but Ebony is going back and forth, back and forth. Uh, he, he, he talked to the, uh, to the media afterwards for about like 10 minutes. He answered a bunch of questions, but he was also saying it's, it's kind of tough. He said it kind of tough to judge like anybody on the offensive defensive line because, you know what I mean? You can't really hold any, you know what I mean? Like the offensive lineman, <clears throat> he made me grab the pads, you know, <clears throat> the plate, you know, inside, you know, the defensive play, the defensive play, you know. Um, you know, there's only so much they can do. They can't, you know, take a guy to the ground or this or that, you know. So it's kind of really tough to judge, you know, the, the two defensive lines. But uh, Kayvon seems to be ramping it up a little bit. Uh, he's, he had a couple good moves um, where uh, one of the days where he apparently he, he was certainly got a sack or so. He One of the days, I think it was Friday, he might have taken Daniel Jones's. I think there's a picture of him. Daniel Jones is looking this way. It's going to happen a lot, especially in the regulars. You know, he looks this way and he's got some guy barreling down on him from behind, ready to rip his head off. So you, you got that. Um, I said the, the defensive backs look pretty good. I said Aaron Robinson's ready to, you know, ready to take off. Uh, Beavers and Belton, right, were, uh, were impressed on Saturday. Darnay Holmes with another, um, you know, caused another turnover. So, I mean, the, the young defensive backs really, really look good. Uh, some of the guys had come back, you know, who, who were out maybe on Friday, but some of the guys did come back. Um, also, you guys, you know, they were talking about Zizo Jolari, you know, um, Dable was asked about him. I mean, he's not putting any timetable on him at all and everything, but it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like it's going to be, you know, long-term, but, you know, we'll have to wind up waiting and see. But, I mean, as of so far, as of right now, you know I mean, the injuries seem to be pretty good. Some of it just seemed like, like the guys were just like with heat exhaustion or so also. I mean, they won't have to worry about that in November, December. But, I mean, so far, you know, there's been some positive with the offense positives with the defense um then obviously they're you know so far nothing crazy with the with the injuries that's a plus got a lot of guys you know coming back from injuries right making progress there but if uh, you know saturday you know that little little fight that they had a little little, little battle royal that they had is any indication of how it's going to be on monday this should be a pretty exciting training camp. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go <laughs> Giants! Woo! -hoo!